And we're live. Welcome to the first episode of Polybius. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is very exciting for all of us. Uh, the first Metaverse series about travel and hospitality. So um, really, really, really excited to be part of that. Uh, just uh, just want to thank uh, Hospitality Nets for uh, believing in this crazy project. Uh, if you remember, we, we did something back in May, uh, a 10 hour event in, uh, in uh, a metaverse version of Rome. And uh, uh, what we're trying to do today is a little different. Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing that I'm trying to, to do is to get people from different industries uh, that are doing something interesting with, with the metaverse to understand the real application, current possible application, and the future application. And uh, overall, my main goal is that um, you can understand a little better what the metaverse is, and especially what the metaverse is not. Because I know that, and this is our, our fault as well, uh, usually when we talk about the metaverse, we only talk about VR, and we only talk about uh, Facebook rebranding, but this is a fraction of the of the, uh, the possibility that the metaverse uh, opens up. So I hope that with this uh, with this web series we will be able to uh, uh, change this uh, this uh, only virtual world narrative and better understand what the metaverse is. Uh, before we start, I just want to say a couple of words, um, and uh, uh, I, I just want to tell you how this group came together. Uh, um, when we did the first event in the Metaverse last May, um, Hospitality Net Meta Meetup, uh, I loved every second of it, but I, I felt that something was missing, and to me, this was the lack of diversity. In, in the viewpoints, because all the people that that joined us for, for that event um, were people from the hospitality space or the travel space or the travel tech space, right? And, uh, and, and, and my problem with that is that we were all looking at the same, in the same direction. And, and uh, what I wanted to do with Polybius was to create a group of people with different backgrounds, not necessarily from, from hospitality, that can explain to you and, and to me as well uh, what the metaverse is, uh, what the metaverse is not, and what, what we can actually do in, in the metaverse. And um, again, this would not be possible without the help of Hospitality Net, uh, Henry Rellings, of course, uh, it's just every time I get a crazy idea, is always on board, so thank you so much, Henry. And the beautiful Jill next to me is very shy, but she's the real boss of the series. Like she takes care of everything, makes sure we're all on time. So thank you so much, Jill, for the amazing work you're doing with this with this web series. Thank you. So and uh, yeah, you're super welcome. And then we got it's. It's very invisible today because it's behind the camera, uh, but we got Davy as well, and uh, Davy is basically the director today. So, uh, Davy, I know you cannot answer, but thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Um, so, uh, how this is going to work? Um, we got around uh, 45, 50 minutes, and uh, um, and uh, every 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 month. We will start discussing different angles of the metaverse. Then again, I think that it's very important for us to start with the basics, and uh, and this is why I wanted to start with with episode one, just by defining what the metaverse is, and again, what the metaverse is not. Uh, little by little, we'll get a little more technical. So um, episode one, two, and three will be more about understanding the metaverse. 
and then we will move a little more into what we can do advertising wise, marketing wise, uh, brand optimization wise, and so on. Um, if you're watching this in 2D, like on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever platform, and you do have a question for us, feel free to write it down and Jill will read all the, the question and will stop us and, and, uh, and we will answer you. And uh, you see that there are some people around in the room and this is something that I wanted to do. I hope this will not turn into total, total chaos but I wanted to have people in the room, right? Uh, so basically, uh, you, you, can, you can actually join, spend some time in a room, uh, look around, and uh, it's, 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 uh, it's great. Otherwise, you just can um, watch the event in 2D on whatever platform you use. So enough, uh, enough talking. I don't want to talk too much. I already talked too much. Uh, let's start with uh, the introduction of our speakers today. And we start with Mattia. Mattia, welcome. Uh, can you tell us a little more about yourself, what you do, your company, and your background experience in the metaverse? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first, one word, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, this is very exciting and new, uh, also for me. Uh, first time joining a, a panel uh, in the metaverse. Uh, I think it's, we're very on the cutting edge. Uh, we're doing stuff on the cutting edge. And yeah, so let's get into it. Um, I am a marketer. Uh, I work mainly in Web3 for Web3 startups. Um, one of the startups is called Udi. It's, it's Italian, by the way, and it's a decentralized data protocol. It's a bit specific, but what, what, what we do, like we're trying to, to make the, let's say the web more, more fair and decentralized and give uh, ownership to the to the people instead of middlemen companies. Apart from these, I'm uh, I'm also building a DAO. That for those of you that have never heard of it, it's a decentralized uh, autonomous organization. Uh, it's also something that uh, got started really with uh, with Web3 and with the, all of the new financial tools that we have. Uh, Web3, which is short for uh, DeFi, decentralized finance, but DAO has they have many other applications, and uh, I hope that my, my point of view here could be that one of uh, a person that wants to build a different type, like more fair economies in, this, in, in the metaverse that give a bit, of the, a bit of view on how we could create economies that are more fair, more equal, that are actually governed by, by people and not by huge institutions. Uh, uh, public or banks or in, by the way the point here is that yeah i would like to see like more involvement uh, from people that are able to take decision uh, while creating these new uh, metaverse societies uh, that's that's what i can say about me okay that's pretty good uh, so mati i'm going to i'm going to ask you a, a first question here because uh, of course we're all familiar with web uh, one or two can you take like a couple of minutes to define very simple terms, what Web3 is and, and uh, yeah. how decentralization plays a role in Web3? Yeah, uh, so well, we can think, um, let's start with Web1 and Web2. Uh, for those of you that have lived through Web1 and Web2, uh, we, we switched, we transitioned from Web1 where it was um, very hard to create content on the internet. Uh, basically, the people creating content were, it was decentralized, right? Because uh, anyone could run his own little server, even his own like computer, uh, create some HTML page and put up uh, a website and just create some content. But all of the rest of the users of the internet were just consuming, basically. They were not able to interact and to create content. Then we have Web2 where uh, users start uh, becoming more important, uh, but at the same time, we have these huge platforms these, uh, that try to capture all of the value of the user that users create. Um, I, I think there is no need to make some some references. Let's just let's just think about yeah, the major. Yeah, please, uh, please don't, don't, don't name drop anyone, please. 
Yeah, no, but let's just think about uh, big social media platforms or uh, big e-commerces, how they capture a lot of a lot of value of the creators and the, the data uh, of the users. All of the data live in centralized uh, servers. They live in centralized database. And this makes the, the internet um, kind of hard for the user to, to navigate for two reasons. First reason is that you mostly have to log in into every new platform you have to give you have to give out your data and if you if you ima- if you can imagine how many data you you have given given out and the value of this data you would really get uh, i mean you would start you would start being worried about all of your data around and uh, the value that you basically you are losing giving out all of this data yeah um and the Web3 makes this makes this decentralization. It's kind of a bit of like it's going forward, but it's also going back. Basically, yeah. Um, with, yeah Ricardo. Basically, with <laughs> uh, can you move out, Ricardo? Web... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically, the with decentralization. <laughs> <laughs> basically, <laughs> with Web3, we're gonna be we we are. We are going to be able to uh, decentralize once again uh, the web and make it, for example, more, even if now it's still an issue, but we can make it more in- interoperable. We can give yeah. the user the ownership of their data, on, of all of their activities, and hopefully in the future, this, this is some, also something related to Web3. What we hope is that we will not have like closed uh, metaverses, even though it's mm-hmm. uh, technically incorrect to say metaverses, but yeah. let's say that we will have kind of one unified re- virtual like metaverse where with your with your data. With your okay, data, I'll, I'll, wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold that thought because this is a question I'm going to ask you later. Okay, so just okay, for now, okay. that that's great. You gave me a very good explanation of what. Web trees, but hold that thought because I will go back. To okay, that. okay. Uh, thank you, Hassan. Tell us a little more about yourself, what you do, and uh, what you what you're trying to achieve in the metaverse space. Thank you so much, Simona. Thanks, Jill, and thanks for everybody uh, who joined us today. I'm really excited ab- about this very uh, unique panel. And um, my name is Hassan uh, Al I'm um, I founded the company Duverse uh, out of Dubai. And what we are doing is actually uh, we're designing and building for businesses on the metaverse. What we're trying to do is to lower down the barriers to enter the metaverse. Uh, so basically, you don't have to buy a land uh, to get into the metaverse. You don't have to buy NFTs. You don't even have to have a crypto wallet to get into the metaverse. Uh, This stuff is uh, nice to have, but not must have in order to get into the metaverse. Uh, Take uh, Spatial, for example, what we are in now. You don't need all this in order to start on the metaverse. So what we are doing is that we come actually from an architecture and interior design uh, background, and we found that uh, one of the main problems with many of the current metaverse service providers is that they come from the gaming industry. So uh, the metaverse experiences that they are providing is sort of cartoonish, which is not good for everybody, not good for businesses. And uh, if we want to sell the metaverse to a wider audience, we really need to create more professional and realistic metaverse experiences. And that's exactly what we decided uh, to do. So uh, that's basically what we're doing. Okay, that's great. And uh, then we got... uh... Michael, uh, I don't think you need any introduction, but try to introduce yourself in a couple of minutes. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Simone. And thanks, everyone. So my name is Michael Cohen. I am a strategic advisor to travel, hospitality, restaurant, tech companies all over the world, work with various uh, partners. I am an advisor to a really powerful focused organization called Rendezverse, which is uh, focused on the mice space and the digital twin space within the travel and hospitality industry. Um, But overall, I think these kind of events are becoming so important to take some of the stigma and some of the like, you know, bleeding edge scenarios that people still think this is um, and kind of eliminating that and understanding that this is leading edge and soon to be every day. Just to be open, I spend, and I'm not a total nerd, (laughs) I spend an hour a day in meetings in the metaverse every single day. 
and it's with clients, it's with my internal partners uh, at Gain Advisors, which is a global advisory organization for technology companies. Uh, this is real, and this is becoming, will become normalized. And what I'm really happy with Simon and Ari and the folks at hospitality.net have done here, is it's provided this kind of dialogue and forum for all of us, either in the travel, hospitality, and restaurant industry, or outside, as Simon said, to understand that this is about amplification and scalability and accessibility for the, for the IRL in real life. Secondarily, there's new, obviously new worlds and new experiences and new immersive um, options that are being developed for consumers, for guests, for passengers, for corporate enterprises internally or externally that you know, were never even possible or even, uh, you know, were never even possible, never even like be able to think about because they were so far-fetched. Now they're not. And that's really important. So I'm a metavisor. That's what I do. That's part of my practice and with my partners. So uh, this is important to me personally, obviously, but I think it's really the right time for people like ourselves and everyone watching in 2D and in LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube to really understand that uh, the train has left the station in many ways. It's not too late, but it's time for people both from an enterprise or a corporate or customer facing perspective to really start to spend some time on what is possible. Okay, I really like, I really like what, what you said about the stigma around the metaverse. And I really think there is a stigma, but I have my own theory, okay? And this is really the last thing I'm going to say and that it will be all over you guys. But hmm. we picked the worst possible name for this technology because like anybody, everybody's talking about Snow Crash right now. And Snow Crash is, is a science fiction book, uh, cyberpunk book from, from the 90s. And, uh, and for the first time in that book, you, you do have the word metaverse. Now, the problem is that I'll, I've always been into, into science fiction all my life. And the first time I've read uh, Snow Crash, I was probably, I don't know, 13 or 14. It's a very dystopian book. You got the mafia, you got uh, like economic, uh, economic collapse, um, you, you got drug dealers. It's a nightmare. So I said, look, why are we getting the name out of this dystopian novel? But then I thought, hmm, do you remember the, the, the Big Brother franchising? That was exactly the same thing. The name was coming from a highly dystopian novel, in this case, in this case uh, 1984 by, by George Orwell. So I think that, I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of words, but I think that a lot of the stigma comes from the fact that we're basically taking the name from a very dystopian uh, dystopian novel. And a lot of what we, uh, what we feel and perceive as the metaverse today is nothing else than a, a convergence of different technologies, AR, VR, mixed reality, blockchain, Web3, NFTs, whatever. So that will be my first question for you guys. Um, well, let's start with Mattia, right? Um, if, if you should describe what the metaverse is, and if, and and even more important, if you sh if you if you should describe what the metaverse is not, which words would you choose? Okay, uh, <laughs> tough question. Uh, it's hard to define something, or not define something, but it's still defining. Uh, it's easier not like. What you say, what is not probably. Thank you for uh, <laughs> thank you for making it easier. Um, well, it's I would say that is known of uh, this. It's known of these single technologies, right? So it's not uh, just virtual reality. It's not just augmented reality. It's not just the software that is uh, behind, for example, creating all of these. Um, polygons that are necessary to create avatars, it's not Web3. Uh, it's, as you correctly said, uh, I mean, I agree with this, it's the convergence of several different technologies that make it possible to create an extended space where we can express, uh, we could be able to express ourselves at the maximum of our capability and invent new type of societies which um, 
which I hope they won't be like crypto, uh, like uh, cyberpunks. Uh, imagine them. So this is this is what I would say. It is not, and a bit of what I say could be. Okay, I, I think you're you're already going too far, but uh, but I I totally agree with you. And I always say, look, we, we should probably read less motivational books and more science fiction novels to understand where the world is going. That's a great, it's a great um, way to put it. Um, Asan, if you should describe the metaverse like to to my dad, for example, how would you describe it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I would say that the metaverse is basically an evolution of the internet from a 2D experience to a 3D fully immersive experience. So, for example, we're having this meeting now in an immersive experience if you're using a headset and we have people probably from more than 25 countries rather than having it on a, on a Zoom meeting or a 2D uh, screen. And this experience is really, really a great enhancement, a great enhanced experience. And I really highly recommend people to immerse themselves in this experience and try it for a while and they will realize the opportunities in the metaverse. Uh, actually, uh, as Michael was saying, he's spending one, one hour a day in that meeting. I'm doing almost the same about two even, even two to three hours a day in the metaverse. So when I go back to my 2D phone or 2D screens, I really feel that this is something from the past. I feel like a dinosaur using these 2D experiences. So this is totally an evolution of the internet. This is an enhancement for the experience. And this comes with a lot of opportunities that we don't want to miss. And we want to think about effective use cases for our businesses and even our personal use uh, on the metaverse. Uh, can I add something? Can I can I make a point sure. on the sure. sun? Okay. So, well, but if you say that uh, that uh, the metaverse is basically the new internet, that uh, like a transition from 2D to 3D internet and immersive experience, that's I, I think that for me it is too narrow design. Yeah, too narrow. Um, it's too narrow. Like it's basically you are describing either virtual reality or augmented reality. Like for me. Uh, what I think is that we cannot take out uh, of, from these equations uh, the, the fact that it's um, a, a, a space of possibility of reshaping of reshaping the, the reality of uh, doing things differently. That, that is that is just yeah. you know like something. Yeah, I agree. I, I I I actually agree, Mattia. Um, if it's okay, Simon, if I can chime in, yeah. Sure, you 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 have okay. to. I have to. Okay. Well, I want to, so it's even better. Um, to Matthias' point and, and Hassan, you're, of course, from the foundation makes sense. You know, the metaverse is an umbrella. It's an umbrella term at this point that encompasses all these immersive, digital, transactional, you know, blockchain, NFT. These are all, in, I think that's, and Web3, that's what Matthias is trying to lead into as well is, this is metaverse is a catchphrase, an overall umbrella term that talks about all of these technologies that as they mature, as they overlay, the innovation overlays each other. And over the next five years, we'll have a very focused um, execution in many ways of what is a successful implementation of the metaverse, whatever that'll look like in five years, and what is an unsuccessful implementation of the metaverse. People are, you know, venture capitalists are making bets right now on which platforms, what actual immersive technology, which transactional secure blockchain or otherwise, you know, um, tech will be the leader. So really what this is all about right now is there, it's, there's so much information, there's so much possibilities, and there's so much tech, both from a from a physical hardware, like all the major organizations that are investing in, in, in viewers and headsets, and then augmented reality, which is, of course, an intelli intelligent overlay on the real world. And then, of course, you know, this is about extended reality, which is a term that's sort of not uh, only the nerds in, like me and others in the industry really, really talk about extended reality anymore, which is XR. And that's really what, what the metaverse you know, can incorporate. So it's about a, you know, they use the term crossing the chasm and all those things. We're in that point right now where we're starting to cross the chasm. And, and what the metaverse is today is going to be very different what it is in five, five years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Look, and I think I always, I always like to, look, first of all, 
uh, Michael, I totally agree with you, but we had this conversation like a billion times, right? And uh, and whenever I think of I think of the metaverse, I think of extended reality. So whenever we're not talking uh, only about the physical world, in a way we are in the metaverse. And I think that's the big misunderstanding that the metaverse is only virtual. And especially for hospitality, that's a big problem because you know hospitality is a very physical industry. And if you if you keep telling the story that the metaverse is is, is only virtual, uh, first of all, you're scaring people. And, uh, and and second of all, that that's that's not even semantically correct. And uh, let me let me tell you a little story. When we did the first event in the metaverse in May, uh, I, I was I was just um, uh, back uh, to to my to my uh, city that's Rome in Italy after almost ten years in in Paris, and so I really wanted to have the the president of the Italian Hotel Association, right? And he told me an interesting story. And it's like, it's, I always, I always come, come back to him whenever I need to know a little about our past. And he told me a story that is pretty interesting. And it really resonated with me. He said, look, you know, the first time uh, a hotel received a reservation by an email, I was there in Italy. And uh, we opened a bottle of champagne. We drank. But then the general manager came to me and said, look, this will be the end of travel. Because people will not travel anymore. They will do everything virtually. And this was an email, right? And I'm seeing exactly the same narrative now with the metaverse. Actually, I've seen the same narrative whenever there's a new technology, right? So now I really want you guys to ask you the same question, but in reverse. What the metaverse is not. Can you start by, Mattia, let's start with you. Can you just explain to the people listening to this, and maybe it's the first experience in the metaverse, that the metaverse is not only virtual, it's not only augmented, but it's digital, part physical and part virtual. Go, Mattia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I have the same... Uh, like the same the same impression from people that as soon as a new big technology uh, comes up, they are very scared of oh people will get completely sucked by by this new virtual uh, reality, for example. Um, well, what we can say is that uh, if we look at what happened with some uh, video games, and let's not confuse uh, metaverse with video games, but video games could be part of the metaverse in some way. Uh, let's look at Fortnite, for example. Like this relationship. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. let me stop you for a second. I think like a lot of a lot of the people listening or watching to this, they're very familiar with a company called LinkedIn, and now LinkedIn has been acquired by Microsoft, right? What most people don't know is that recently Microsoft acquired another company that is actually a gaming oh, yeah. company called Activision Blizzard for three yeah. times the value of LinkedIn. So just, just just to put things into perspective, sure, gaming is a part of the metaverse, but but gaming is is uh, is a big part of the infrastructure of the metaverse. Sorry if I interrupted you. No, no, it's okay. That's a good point. And what? Yeah, because like these companies, they are they are creating cultures in the metaverse. They are creating uh, relationships between people that then uh, they also flow out from the, the. If we think about still two separate worlds. Right. If we think about physical reality and digital reality, and we do not think about digital, what I would say is that they flow from digital into the physical reality. But what actually happens is that since we are living in some kind of more fluid space between digital and physical, these cultures that maybe kind of that you can't even exactly recognize if they were born into the digital space or into the physical space. But what matters is that they encompass the two spaces and kind of uh, unify the, the, the culture. They, they, go, uh, they go all over. And that's why like, this is this strategic acquisition. Like, what, is, what is more powerful than cultures? Like people believing in things and people, um, people behaving according to their values, right? So this is, yeah, this is my take on it. Oh, totally. Look, and, and I think let's 
if we can do something good today, that will be to slightly change the narrative. So it's not about yeah, I, I agree, Simon. That's 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 the that, that should be the focus of this is to change the narrative in a lot of ways. Yeah. And and Michael, you know my my I always uh, there is a book that I really loved, and uh, it's 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 a it's a philosopher called uh, David Chalmers. And he wrote an amazing book called Reality Plus. Basically, what he says is that in just uh, probably 20 years, uh, the, the difference between physical reality, virtual reality, and augmented reality will be so slim that it will be completely useless to even try to make to make a difference. And Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if, Simon, if I can interject, I think what, sure. what's, key, no. what's key here is and let's talk about travel and hospitality for a second. I mean, there's lots of people in, in the industry that are watching today. I know we're, we're, we're having a macro discussion, but I think it's important yeah, to uh, you know, talk about a specific vertical, obviously, as well. Listen, the metaverse is all about amplification of the experiences for guests, passengers, and back-of-the-house employees. It's amplification of the in-real world, the IRL. It's not about, um, you know, cannibalizing. It's, that, that's what it's not. Again, you ask what it's not, that's one of the things it's not. So the reality literally is going to be, and it's happening already, is that, you know, every, every metaverse slash XR technology in travel and hospitality, restaurant tech, enterprise, you know, general like stadiums and consumer entertainment, all has to go through three filters. Anyone who's developing and or looking to execute a metaverse implementation for a certain vertical or across consumer B2C or B2B, you've got to go through three filters. The first thing is, does it provide utility? Second thing, does it drive engagement? And the third thing is, does it um, expand loyalty? Now, those are three terms from you know, an MBA course on marketing or international marketing or consumer or enterprise, you know, sales and marketing and experiences. So it's about utility, engagement, and loyalty. And secondarily, as you were saying, Simon and others, as this fig digital, which means this hybrid combination of the physical location, destination, resorts, experience, and a virtualized immersive digital twin, perhaps. So what this is, is that as, as, a, as a guest, consumer, Etc. I want to be able to pre-experience, you know, the Atlantis in the Bahamas as part of my decision making for my family. So, the metaverse and XR technologies are, you know, implementing these kind of expanded experiences in the in the in the digital world, the immersive world, where I can now pre-experience. Then on-premise, metaverse for travel, hospitality, etc., and, and other industries like again, sports stadiums and entertainment venues. There's an expanded, enhanced, ex experiential opportunity for uh, actual consumers. So for a quick example, I was at a, a wonderful art exhibition in Vienna, Austria this summer, where they had the full experience, and it was, you know, it was amazing. And uh, uh, it was Gustav Klimt. It had the kiss and all his works. It was amazing. But then they, after, at the end of the museum tour, they had a, a VR experience of it. And it was incredible. First of all, it was incredible to see grandmas and little kids all involved with headsets, and they were having an expanded immersive experience to what they've what they've uh, would have only experienced in the, in the in the physical world. The last part of this all is after post. What the metaverse is doing for all types of consumer and and enterprise and and B two B and B two C is now there's an opportunity to I I've experienced something, so I pre research. I pre-experienced, I experienced something on premise, either in a physical or, uh, you know, enhanced immersive environment. And now I can actually take my Kodak slides from 1970s, the you know, that, that's my, kind of like the, um, the metaphor, and share that with others. So there is, you know, high definition 3D VR recording of, of me, uh, you know, at Disney World. Well, now I can actually share that with others in my family and friends group post-trip, post-experience, post-concert, post-conference, et cetera. So it's pre, present, and post. And that's really what, you know, in my opinion, what, how the metaverse really is uh, driving in the, in the short term, incredible impact uh, for B2B and B2C. I, I yeah, think totally. Talking I, I, about... 
Go on, yeah, yeah. Can I? Yeah, I, I feel like I agree. I agree totally. I think this is this is going to be, of course, like the first uh, the first way in which we use kind of these technologies. But I feel this is still too too narrow, right? We're still talking about VR. I think that the switch of the narrative has we have to deal with the part of relationships. We have to deal to deal with the part of cultures. The fact that that the metaverse is a space for new cultures to emerge. Uh, it's a space of expression. It's a space where you can create what you have always imagined um that, that's that's, that's the point i would like to yeah that's the point i would like to i mean, to, I mean um, mateo, mateo we're, we're, yeah. sorry go ahead Taza. you go ahead Taza. yeah yeah i i was uh, i wanted also to say something about what we uh we are doing in terms of building what we call a human-centric metaverse so a human-centric metaverse means we are studying what would be the effect of the metaverse on the users in terms of mental health and, and well-being because somebody has to take care of this. We, we, uh, most of the platforms take care of the technology and experience and so forth, but somebody has to take care of the human factor or the effect of the metaverse experiences on the people. And when you're asking Simone what the metaverse is not, it's definitely not only VR, it's definitely not like a parallel universe that we are we will be living in. I think the idea of digital twins and, and creating and running some operations on the metaverse uh, is a very uh, important idea and it's for a good cause. And there are some uh, things also related to sustainability. So for example, there is no physical construction on the metaverse while you can run some actual businesses and full operation on the metaverse, which saves resources and uh, decreases, you know, um, greenhouse gas emissions. There is no physical commuting on the metaverse, which again, uh, decreases uh, the transportation and so forth. So for example, if you want to build uh, a physical store, retail store, instead of having 10 branches, 10 physical branches, you can have one physical branch and like 10 different uh, branches on the metaverse. So the idea of, of uh, creating a digital twin and running the operation on the metaverse is a very, uh, I think, effective idea. And I'll give an example from the real estate uh, industry, for example. Uh, the real estate industry now, they are, uh, for example, showcasing, um, uh, they are creating digital twins of their properties, and they are showcasing under construction properties and overseas properties to clients in a fully uh, immersive experience. Now, this is just a, maybe a basic use case, but I mean, we could think of um, many use cases tailored to different industries. Yeah, I, I, Hassan, you nailed Hassan, it. Um, go, go ahead, Simon. Yep. Before you go, on. Um, again, my the goal of this uh, of this series is to educate people. So you need to be very patient because I'm going to ask you questions that for you are like obvious. I just want to make sure that everyone can understand. That's to me, it's, it's the main goal of what we're doing here. So Hassan, you, you're talking a lot about digital twins, right? And of course, yeah. we all know what a digital twin means. But mm -hmm. let, let, again, let's try to to explain that the main concept of digital twin that has been around since probably the 80s uh, to, to somebody that never heard the word. So could you please define what a digital twin is? Um, it's basically um, you, you are replicating or copying the physical uh, place, the physical house, the physical office. You're just making exactly the same exact design on the metaverse. Uh, like the space what we are sitting in now, if you have an office like with a specific design, you will copy the same thing and even you will copy the same operation. So for example, we are we are building for a burger restaurant on the metaverse. This is a brand which has its own, you know, designs and guidelines. We are copying the same brand, same color, same operation where you can go on the metaverse uh, restaurant and order the food and then they will deliver to your house. Uh, the same for furniture stores, basically for any industry. This works for any industry. So uh, that is basically uh, what a digital twin is. And for hospitality, this will be pretty big because like, Usually when you talk to, to a hotel about the metaverse, the first thing they think about is a digital twin. Maybe they don't know exactly what a digital twin is, but in their mind is basically taking their property and creating a, a, a digital version of, of the property in the metaverse. But again, that is just a part of what the metaverse is. So uh, again, I just want to get 
people to understand a little bit the lingo. And of course, uh, I think it's episode two or three, I don't remember exactly, we will talk about the glossary of, of the metaphors. Mm-hmm. But there's something much for explaining this because it's very, again, it's very helpful for, for people that is that's, they're not coming from the metaverse industry, right? And if I can add something. Simone, uh, yeah. yeah. I think, um, interestingly, Mattia has a very, you know, he, he's, he's an expert in, in the areas of the metaverse that are um, maybe more geared towards what you talked about, Mattia, which is things that aren't in existence today, right? New, new scenarios, new use cases, new interactions, and a lot of it complex and important and secure technology that's around that. And then Hassan is coming from the perspective of, you know, primarily, I'm not saying, Hassan, I know everything you're doing, but I'm saying from the perspective of digital twin. And, and, and what I think is really key here is from the hybrid or maybe from the middle ground is there is a combination of what's today and what's tomorrow. The biggest uh, opportunity and challenge of the metaverse and, and many of us who are involved in companies who are, uh, you know, emerging and scaling and investors who are funding it is that there needs to be tangible real world use cases where consumers and business executives see the value clearly and it's not simply Decentraland or Sandbox or NFT hype and things like that. So the cool thing is, the interesting thing is, Digital Twin is a perfect on-ramp for consumers slash uh, corporate executives to get their head around what the metaverse could be, right? But Matteo is talking about is 100% true. In the background, there's an incredible amount of complex technology that's going to ensure that it's more efficient, it's more secure, and that it has a wide possibility. So there's a today and a tomorrow maybe in some respects and in, in, in this kind of conversation, uh, which I think is really important. Like, again, one of the firms I'm working with closely is Rendezvous. Their whole play is remote review, remote selection of, of convention and hotel experiences with configurations, et cetera. That's eliminating, as Hassan saying, eliminating a wide range of, of travel expense and, and encourages sustainability and enables real customers to be able to make a short list of what they want to actually select for their conference in 2025, but do it remotely in a beautiful digital twin environment that's incredibly elegant, accurate, and um, sustainable. So that's really important from, from a real world perspective. And then what Matea is talking about is, look, you know, blockchain and all these other, um, you know, very complex technology that we hear about, but we don't, not all, not all of us, especially consumers and some business people to be open, they really are confused. But the, the technologists and the scientists are working on that side as well to ensure that the next generation, let's call it, Matea, the next opportunities are going to be even deeper and wider and more um, engaging than ever before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not just... Uh, you guys, we got a, we got a very, very interesting question that I would like to ask you sure. the time run, okay? Uh, so sorry for interrupting you. Well, first of all, I do agree with you, Michael, that, again, we're talking a lot about the metaverse now, and uh, it's, there's a lot of hype and to a certain extent, it's very similar to what happened with uh, with the internet back in the mid nineties, right? But a lot of like the digital twin um, analogy to me is perfect because, like, when you buy a car, for example, and uh, um, and you think about crash tests, and in our mind, a crash test is a physical car uh, going full speed and crashing into a wall right but that's not really exactly what is happening today you know what 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 what, what uh, car companies are doing is they're creating digital twins of these cars and they're crashing these cars in virtual world so again it's 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 a new label that we put on something that has been around for a while and uh, and that is what i was telling you at the very beginning to me the old metaverse narrative is very similar to the iphone when I think about the iPhone, remember like the, the, the right. launch of the first iPhone, there was nothing, nothing innovative about the iPhone. Like the cool thing about the iPhone was that it took many existing technologies and put all these technologies into one single device, right? And this is exactly what the metaverse is. It's, it's getting AR, VR, digital twins, blockchain, Web3, whatever, blah, 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 and put it into a single 
uh, a single uh, uh, piece of technology. But this is where the question is coming from. And uh, we got a question from, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering your name now right now. Allard Jan uh, Alprink, I hope I pronounce it at least 50 percent right. And this is very close to my, it's, it's a question that is very close to me, okay? So I'm going to ask you this. And it says, uh, I'm going to, to read it to you. Uh, you talk about the metaverse as if it is one system, but with the central land, some new crypto voxels and others, there are still many platforms out there. Until these merges or some kind of interoperability emerges, it will be hard for hoteliers and business to commit. Well, first of all, Allard, this will be the, the main topic of one of the episodes because, of course, to me, interoperability between systems is, Correct. is the big, the, like the number one barrier to mainstream adoption of the metaverse. But look, I'm going to ask you this again. So, Mattia, can you start, like, like what is the problem with interoperability between metaverses today? And I agree with you when, look, I don't like the metaverse uh, narrative. I like to think about metaverses because there's no, look, let's be honest here. There's no such thing as one. So, Mattia, can you explain a little better to, to, to the to the viewers what what this problem is all about uh well i see two sub problems here uh one is strictly technical right uh that is always uh software developers and engineers they have different views of which is the best system to create uh to create new things right so it could come from there but on another point of view it could come from companies trying to capture and capitalize uh, the value created into the, the metaverses and trying to lock in uh, the people by not, not creating interoperability. So one side, it's a technical problem. On the other side, I would say it's more of a value and intentional, intentional uh, problem. So here I would say, Okay, what, what do we want to do, guys? Do we want to do we want to reproduce uh, the same mechanics of Web two, or do we want actually to make stuff really uh, decentralized and interoperable and give the opportunity to all of the people that are interacting in the metaverse to have a fluid experience um, between uh, the, these different metaverses, right? Or, or do I have to create every time I join a new space? Uh, in the metaverse, do I have to create another avatar from scratch without any reputation? Maybe I cannot have my surf uh, hair that I have right now and that I like so much <laughs> because some companies decide that uh, I have to, to yeah, <laughs> that I have to create a specific avatar for their system. Well, that's, that's about what we're going to do. And that's also, I think, why it is so important to discuss how do we want metaverses and to be do we want them interoperable or are we fine with what web2 built so a very siloed kind of structure between platforms Mattia, to me the, the the answer is pretty easy like we can create a metaverse in web2 but that will be just uh, like the seams or second life of steroids yeah. this will be like a great uh, immersive 3d experience but it will not create any value. It will not be decentralized. So I think we all agree here that we uh, want to build a good, open, utopic metaverse. Web3 is a big part of that. Uh, Hassan, well, it will still what is create your... value. Oh, sorry, just one yeah. thing. It will still create value, but especially it will create value for the companies that own the metaverses. And... Uh, like um, drastically decrease the value of the users because they're decreasing their possibility to uh, to, to to experience uh, metaverses with a unified identity. Hassan, I'm asking you to be like the teacher here. Okay? Can you uh, yeah. like I tell you my 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 uh, view on this? Whenever we talk about the metaverse uh, as uh, something comparable to the internet. I think we're, we're making a semantic mistake. And I see the metaverse now more as uh, many platforms uh, 
uh, more similar to what social networks are today. So you've got a metaverse where you can go and just hang out with friends. You've got a metaverse where you go and, and work. But you do not have such a, you know, a sensual idea of what the metaverse is. So Hassan, can you explain this a little bit? Because this is like the question I get all the time from my, from my clients. They want to know, how do I enter the metaverse? And I say, look, there's no such thing as the metaverse. There are many metaverses. So first of all, you need to understand where your demographic is, if you, if you need to buy land, if these metaverses can talk to each other to a certain extent and so forth. Can you explain a little more? And again, I, I'm sorry, but I'm asking you to be a little more academic here. But can you explain the problem to somebody that is hearing about the problem for the first time? Uh, I think entering and starting and interacting in the metaverse is quite easy and simple, and we are overcomplicating it. And wh what we are uh, what we are doing here, uh, I mean, we are sort of handholding the general public into the metaverse. And in order to do that, we um, we need to be a bit reductive. So I'm using some analogies and using some stuff which will be reductive, and I'm sorry, Mattia, if you don't like these kind of analog uh, analogies, they might not be like 100% technically okay. correct, but I mean, okay. we need to simplify it. We, yeah, we, we, we don't need to, uh, I mean, um, use heavy terminology uh, like uh, when we speak generally about the metaverse, because it is easy to get into the metaverse. Uh, so the, the comparison or the analogies that I was using from Web 2 to Web 3 uh, or sort of translating the terminologies that we are, we know about on, in Web2, uh, like, for example, having a, a metaverse space is comparable to uh, having a website. Having uh, Selecting a metaverse platform, one of these metaverses, uh, is comparable to uh, selecting a, a domain uh, to host your website. So this is the kind uh, of thing. We have many metaverses, and I think many metaverse platforms from many countries uh, and, and I think this is healthy. This is not bad, actually, because you will select the metaverse that is suitable for you. For example, it's like you, you're having a retail outlet or a fashion store, and you open this fashion store in different uh, like um, countries or locations or shopping malls. So each of these metaverses will have its own audience, will have its uh, own target audience, demographics, and so forth. So uh, this is something, I mean, Interoperability between them is, again, it's so reductive, but again, it's comparable to uh, integrating different tools and different things, but in a much enhanced and much, I would say, um, um, better or advanced way uh, in the metaverse. So that's my take on it. And I'm sorry again, Mattia, I know this is totally reductive, but <laughs> no, as I, I said, uh, we're trying to get part of it. Hassan, yeah. yeah. it needs to be reductive, you know? We're like. We're our goal here is to take uh, overcomplicated subjects, make it yeah. into something that is understandable for people that is not coming from the tech world. And look, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm some kind of exception because I spent 10 years working in hotels and I spent the remaining 12, 14 years, I don't even remember, working in, tech, in the tech world, right? And I know that a hotelier should be more focused on the quality of the pillows and the mattresses rather than, you know, the, 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 the underlying blockchain technology that is uh, fueling the metaverse. So what we're trying to do here is really to explain to, to people without a tech background what the metaverse is. Uh, Simon, so really, thank you so much yeah. for that. If I can uh, just add on, if you don't mind. Sure. sure. Okay, so I think what's helpful um, is that we're talking about interface and infrastructure. So those are words that many people, not patronizing anyone, we have to be careful we don't do that, okay? Because we are early in many respects, some of us in this industry, um, in the uh, immersive XR metaverse industry. But it's about interface and infrastructure. A lot of what Mattia is talking about is is partially, it's, it's infrastructure. It's very complicated. It's very important. It's very secure. It's very scalable. It's very new. And, and Hassan is talking about a lot about, and I think it's fair, and I agree for both of them, is that this is about interface, right? It's about on-ramp. It's about experiential. But here's the thing. We're not talking about, this is an analogy that many of you may remember. We're not talking about a, a, a Betamax or VHS discussion. Videotapes took over. It, you know, was it Betamax, was it VHS? Well, laser, the winners laser. will win. 
Laser, laser disc. Well, laser disc. But see, laser laser just didn't go anywhere, right? All did. It didn't go anywhere. But it wasn't successful. Yeah. So the so things will shake out based upon what has the most you know uh, utility, engagement, and loyalty. I kind of bang that drum a lot. But here it is. It's about interface. So yes, we're talking about uh, for for various vertical markets, including travel, hospitality, and restaurant tech. The interface can be immersive in many ways. It can be augmented reality as the digital overlay. It can be mixed reality. And you know, Apple's coming out with a device in three to six months that could be the defined device. You know, Meta has spent billions. ByteDance, which is the most incredible uh, success in regards to you know, digital and mobile technologies, their, their purchase of Pico. So they have this incredible investment in another piece of interface hardware, let's say. So interface and infrastructure. That's you know, a, a word that a lot of the people who are watching today, they're, they're in the technology industry in general, many of them are. That's a clear uh, you know, um, terminology that everyone gets. What the interfaces will eventually be, what the infrastructure will eventually be the most dominant, that's gonna happen over the next five years. Okay, that's, uh, that's great, uh, amazing. Um, so we're running out of time, but we got like a lot of questions I'm seeing. And um, what I would like to do is I would like to ask you like a final question and then just a, 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 like, like a final tip for uh, people listening to that. And then, uh, you know, to me, the, the metaverse should be all about collaboration and decentralization. And uh, so if you're, if you're up for it, I see that there are still like 10, 10 avatars around. You can actually introduce yourself and we can talk a little and uh and you know and, and again share value um jill do you do you wanna do you wanna take that i know there is a question or oh, probably two questions or do you want me to ask this yeah i um there are two questions here um on linkedin um there is one from todd stevens he's pretty uh, um, engaged. Uh, he's leaving some, some comments and questions in the chat, which might be interesting to uh, look at after this session. But one of the questions he has is, uh, should gaming companies hire real architects and designers to help create content that relates well with human use? Uh, who's going to take this one? Go ahead, Hassan. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Go. go ahead. I'd you like go. to know your uh, your point of view. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, look, uh, the three D objects, high resolution, you know, representations, uh, the ability to scan products, content, real world scenarios is becoming so prevalent now. The iPhone thirteen has appropriate, you know, uh, horsepower and lenses so that anyone can actually you know, go around a rotation of, of a physical product and now suddenly it's something in the 3D object that can be embedded into a immersive experience. So to me, that's slam dunk, right? The representation of real world objects, items, artifacts to be incorporated in, into a immersive experience, be it metaverse, be it, uh, you know, whatever the appropriate uh, terminology will be in, in the end is, is critical because it creates that bridge of in the real, in real life, to the immersive virtual side of things. But as Matea is the representative on this panel, <laughs> you know, all, things that don't even exist in the world, things that, things that cannot exist in the physical world can exist in the immersive environment. And that's really exciting as well. Okay, do, that's great. Is that okay? I mean, that was amazing. I think uh, I think that question is a very good question because I do believe that it's very important that in order to build um, an effective metaverse or metaverses, there should be a marriage between gamers and architects and interior designers, real world architects and interior designers. Now we need to do a bit or actually lots of training for the architects in order to teach them how to build and design on the metaverse yet this is a very important uh, message in order to push the metaverse industry forward yeah and i think we're still experimenting with this like again i, I see a lot of similarities with uh, uh, like website creation back in the mid 90s uh i'm actually building a space a digital twin meeting room for a client 
and, uh, and I received uh, maybe 20, 20 different uh, quotes, and they range from 1,000 euros to 85,000 euros. So I think we're still figuring this out. Uh, but that's, that's why it's so important to me to, uh, to make sure that people understand because, you know, it's, it's easy to get into the hype and fear of missing out and, uh, and uh, invest money. And uh, just in five years, you basically have nothing. You know, it happened with dot-com bubble. Uh, still, the dot-com bubble created the e-commerce world that is $5 trillion uh, market today. So, again, this is exactly what I, what I, what I want to do with this. Uh, Simon, I have, I have a one, one, one addition, if I could, for this specific yeah, sure. question, real quick. So, you're the boss. Uh, well, you're the boss, but anyway. So, but you're very nice. So, <laughs> real world. Real world. Here we go. 3D objects or, or converting, you know, um, objects from IRL to, to immersive experiences. One of my uh, contemporaries and partners, Daniel Groznilov, he leads a company called um, Imagine Reality. And they're working on, and I'm helping them, they're working on this incredible, classic, high-end car museum. Because there's this major collector with a major museum in Canada that has this incredible collection. So he and, he and his team are, are, in, are you know, converting it all to digital high resolution 3D uh, versions and they're replicating and enhancing the experience for, for, for people who are interested to have much more interaction and much more enjoyment with these physical classic car objects. And now it was very difficult, maybe even impossible for many people to experience this collection. It's a massive collection, but now the world, again, interface and infrastructure, anyone in the world will, as long as they have the right uh, tickets or gating environment, be able to experience this impressive collection of artifacts. And that's a real world example happening today that's being invested now and being implemented today. Okay, that's great. Guys, we're really running out of time, but I just want to ask you one last question, if it's fine for you. Uh, again, the main idea of, of Polybius was to uh, create diversity in uh, the different angles uh, of how the metaverse can, can work today and how this can be applied in, in, in the future. But this is still an hospitality uh, blog. So, um, uh, Michael, I know you you got a pretty strong opinion about that, but I'm going to ask you something because I want I want to listen to um, your external point of view. So I'm going to start with Matthias. So Matthias, two questions, okay? Uh, the first one is yep. if you should, in your in your opinion, and you're not coming from the hospitality world, of course, so to me it's even more valuable because never forget that a lot of the innovators in the hospitality world. Uh, they they do not come from the hospitality world. Just think of think of Airbnb, for example. And uh, so, Matia, question number one is: if you uh, if you have to give one suggestion to uh, hotels or apartments or, or you know destinations that would like to enter the metaverse, what would it be? And second question: this will be the same question for all of you guys. What is the best way to get in touch with you if uh, uh, if you were to want to know more about yourself? <laughs> so uh, regarding the first question, uh, well, uh, it's the first time I find myself thinking about it. Uh, well, my, my obvious answer would be uh, try to make it as fluid as possible uh, to, I mean, um, try to, to make this experience uh, when you're thinking about uh, the how to build your metaverse uh, or how to create your space in the metaverse uh, uh, to, to make sure that it's a fluid experience. Uh, it's tailored to the user. Uh, this is something also that is, I, I feel it's valid also for Web2, like, like uh, designing stuff which is centered on, on people uh, using it. Um, and regarding the second question, um, uh, well, so it was like how to get in contact, right? The second one. Yeah. With you, yes. Well, uh, listen, like, if, 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 if viewers want to know more about what you do or your take on the metaverse, what's the best way to get in touch with you? 
uh, well, I, I would recommend the, the panels that are published uh, into uh, Hospitality Net. Uh, it's very well structured, I think. So for each episode, you have the viewpoint of all of the panelists. I read all of the viewpoints myself before joining the event. And I, def I definitely had some, um, a lot of good hints and viewpoints that I, that I have never thought about before. So that would be one thing uh, to, to get to know more. And then regarding personally myself, I would say um, that the, the easiest way to, to get in contact, it's, it's definitely LinkedIn, it's the platform uh, so far I'm using the most, and where you can find what I'm doing, and sometimes to share my perspective on, on things. That's great. Um, Hassan, uh, a little uh, tip for uh, hospitality providers, accommodation providers, travel providers, and then how viewers can get in touch with you if they want to know more about what you do. Yeah, sure. My advice would be uh, instead of listing your property or hotel on a website, on a booking website and showing some photos, create this uh, hotel, like what I call digital twin, create it on the metaverse and show your hotel to the whole world. This will, will really differentiate you and will give you an advantage. And this is not hard. Uh, this is easy. Just go to the right people to do it, and you will be really, you will have an advantage. Now, uh, how to contact me, the best way is LinkedIn, but you can also uh, send an email to build at doverse.ae, uh, which is do, uh, d u v e r s e dot a e. Yeah, Jill, uh, you probably just please uh, share the, the contacts of the speakers on, on the LinkedIn post, okay? And uh, and I do I, I totally agree with you. Actually, there is a there is a client of mine uh, as an avatar today, and what we're doing with this client is it's it's a it's beautiful art hotel, and we're building a digital twin with uh, NFTs, um, with an NFT gallery. So like trying to create value for both the hotel and the artists and uh, the gallery. So that's uh, really Again, that, that's the metaverse. It's not only virtual reality. It's always a combination of physical, virtual, uh, augmented, and so forth. So I totally agree with you. Michael, I know you got a strong opinion on that. You're the one <laughs> in, in the panel that is more into the hospitality space. So I will leave the last word to you. Thank you, Simon. And thanks, everyone. Really, really great dialogue and conversation. Thanks for everyone who's watching uh, either in immersive or other platforms. Look, uh, and I say this in a positive way, there's no stress, but this is not if, this is when. So in the travel, hospitality, and restaurant industry, you really need to start incorporating these conversations in your digital marketing, senior management uh, meetings and strategies, as well as your hotel and property and resort and restaurant development organizations. So the key here is that, you know, you don't have to be first. You may not even have to be second, but you definitely have to be. So, you know, be open-minded, work with professionals. Um, you know, there's a lot of great initiatives that have already happened over the last year and a half. There are some unfortunate uh, challenges that were, in, you know, that were uh, enabled, and that's life. That's, there's some trial and error to this, but there's a maturity in the interface and the infrastructure that you can now really have deep conversations, strategic conversations about 2023 and beyond for your brand, for your property ownership group, for your architectural ownership group, et cetera. So that's something I would just leave with folks. Um, and uh, LinkedIn is the primary, Michael C. Cohen. Uh, the C is there because there's a particular Michael Cohen in, North, in the United States that he's not a very savory character, so I had to put that C in there. Um, <laughs> Uh, but any case, uh, that's a great way to reach out to me. I look forward to having uh, you know various dialogues with lots of different individuals. Look, guys, thank you so much for being with me today. Again, uh, remember, Polybius is not only a metaverse series; it's also a, a written panel. So once a month, we talk about one specific topic. Uh, I, 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 I suggest to go and check out the the one that we published yesterday. Again, there are some amazing uh, viewpoints, and uh, you know there there is uh, this one from from Tracy uh, uh, that says that uh, behind every avatar, there's always a person. And to me, like it resonated yeah. a lot with me. 
because it's again it 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 does explain that this is not only the virtual world we're talking about the digital uh, future something that is already happening just so you know the platform we're we're using today to do this is being uh, uh, is being founded in 2016 so again whenever you 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 hear people talking about the metaverse as the next big thing is not the technology has been around for a long time um, it's a convergence of different technologies and uh, uh, we're, you know the work we're trying to do and, and again thank you Mattia thank you Hassan thank you Michael for being part of that uh, we're trying to uh, just eliminate this, thank you. this new understanding um, for, again I want to thank uh, Jill uh, thank you so much for, you don't know about it, but Jill is sending me messages on WhatsApp with questions and, uh, you know, she's coordinating everything. So, like, again, I, I don't know how I would I would do it without you. And thanks to, to Daddy for uh, directing the, the, the thing today. Yeah, black guys, because they, they really deserve it. And, of course, thanks, big thanks to Henry for, um, you know, believing in this in this project. Um, I think we, we're fine. Like uh, we 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 spoke more over over and out. Yeah, Jill. So sure. I would like to thank you as well for uh, putting this together and for hosting this first uh, event. And uh, we're looking forward to the other ones and hopefully many more. Yeah, sure. That's what we are here for. And uh, so thank you so much. Uh, we can take a little time to relax now. And again, Matia. Uh, Hassan, Michael, if you want to leave, thank you so much. You did an amazing job today, and you did an amazing job with the panel. I just, I, I, I read them all. They were all amazing. And, and uh, uh, but we can take a little bit of extra time because I see there are still some avatars here. So maybe, sure. uh, maybe if you wanna, if you wanna join the conversation and ask some questions or just introduce yourself, that would be great. I see Mauricio is here. Uh, friend, uh, all good. So uh, I'm here. <laughs> How are you, man? <laughs> very good. Very good. It's great to see yeah. you here. Man, I put some dancing moves now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. That's great. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's super. That's the why. That's um, the why. <laughs> Hassan, we should hide. So I hope you work. enjoyed the, the first episode. Yeah. Uh, let's and, try. and again, it's, uh, it's <laughs> really, you know, the, the speakers. Does it work? The speakers oh. we got. No, oh, I'm up here. Amazing. There we go. There's something strange going on on the, <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you should look at the, one of the arms of Hassan. It looks like uh, completely broken. <laughs> it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Elbow. I didn't I didn't do it. I didn't do oh, it. Broken <laughs> elbow. Elbow. Yeah, still hard, still hard. Yeah. Well, as long as it's if it's not broken in real life, then you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, but again, you know, Michael, it's you were talking about in real life, right? Yeah. And um, I'm not sure. Like when we talk about in real life, I always feel like an old man because IRL means something to us because we're old. But um, if you ask, like, a, a, you know, five or six year old. Uh, what real is, uh, they could probably surprise you. Like when I was talking yeah. to this, to the, the, the son of a client of mine, and he said to me, look, if I play Roblox today with a friend that is New Delhi, and tomorrow I play hide and seek with a friend that just lived next to me, to me, on a friendship level, that's exactly the same experience. So I think this 100%. dichotomy like in real life or virtual life or mental life, it's like, uh, look, Michael, we need to deal with the fact that we're boomers. <laughs> we're getting old. Yeah. And, and right. uh, yeah. Do you agree with I that? mean, Simon, here, here's, here's the thing. It's also the audience, right? So for this conversation, you know, part of our mandate is to hopefully explain, hopefully create some clarity, maybe a little bit on somewhat of a noisy space. So when I bring up uh, IRL or in real world or in real life, excuse me, it's for the it's for the constituency. It's for people who are attending this event. If we're talking to you know my my kids or some people's grandkids, whatever, you're absolutely correct. They have been immersed in immersion since they've been a small child. So for them, it is just reality. I don't remember who said that. 
like I, I read this other article that was, that was like shocking to me. There was this mother talking about uh, this uh, kid um, seeing a magazine, like a physical magazine for the first time. And he was trying to, to, you know, to pinch the, the image. And she said, right. to my kid, a magazine is an iPad that's not working. <laughs> it's great <laughs> if you think about that. Yeah, yeah so, very true. Okay. I got Luca as well. Luca, you will be in one of the episodes, right? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Ah, perfectly. Yeah, Luca. Yeah, I'm sorry because I was uh, muted. Yeah, yeah, I will be on one, I guess. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, I if it's four or five, but but he's definitely on. How do we do today, Luca? Was it okay? Ah, uh, yeah. Just uh, actually, I was uh, I was about to 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 get the the NFT for NFT London right now. So I just I don't know if anybody of you are going to be there. Not really. Not I'm uh, I'm full with uh, with MBA lecturing, so I don't think London for me will probably be twenty twenty three. Uh, what's the NFT? I didn't get it. Sorry. It's uh, it's NFT basically, London. yeah, yeah. It's basically the the European event of what was done in uh, in New York, NFT New York. Probably you saw a bunch of uh, board apes going around during that event, and uh, they are replicating it in Europe. So, so. well, actually, I'm trying to buy a David Bowie NFT. I don't know if you if you've seen those; they're amazing. But jeez, the, the price is, is, is crazy. Like mm. 20 ETH, like crazy. Uh, wow, Simone, really? I do have to go that to another much. meeting now because this is the cool thing. I got to go. But thanks, everybody. Hassan, nice to meet you. Yeah, Michael, okay. thank, thank you so you much for that. Thanks, guys. And thanks. Again, nice to meet you. Hassan, Michael. Thank, thank, thank you so thank much you for your time. Of course. Thank you, everybody. Um, Jill, please share on the on LinkedIn page, on YouTube page, or Facebook page, on the 2D platforms where we are broadcasting. Uh, the next episode, and again, Polybius is, um, is really just, um, uh, just came up with this idea that I had in my, in my bedroom and Harry uh, liked it. So again, thank you so much, guys, for, for bringing this to life. Uh, every month we publish a viewpoint, uh, we'll try to get uh, around 50 people uh, from different different uh, industries uh, doing something interesting in the metaverse so that we can understand from different angles as well. And uh, once a month, we will meet in the metaverse to, to discuss about that. And uh, Jill, I don't remember exactly, but I think the next one is uh, about like the, 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 the glossary of the metaverse. So we'll go through uh, all the different, uh, you know, names. What is an avatar? What is a wallet? What is an NFT? What is a DAO? And so forth. So again, if you want to know more, just make sure to uh, stick with us. Uh, you can sign up to the newsletter on Hospitality Net. Uh, you can get in touch with me, with Jill, with Davy, with Angry, and all the speakers will be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Uh, for now, I want to thank you all. Uh, the first episode was uh, was very good. Thank you for your insights, and thank you so much for all the people uh, joining as as avatars. Uh, Jill, thank you so much for what you're doing. It's really, really, really appreciated. Thank you, guys, and speak soon. Bye. Thank yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing time. So, thank you.